We have previously looked at filter banks and we have also looked at polyphase implementations of FIR filters. And the polyphase implementations could save the amount of computations that we needed to do per unit time when we combine the filter with a downsampling or an upsampling operation. And filter banks use downsampling and upsampling in order to split the signal into several different frequency components. In this video we'll look at what can happen if we combine the two in a clever way to even save more multiplications than could be saved with a polyphase filter alone. So let's consider a filter bank. So we have an input signal x of n and we have an output signal y of n. And at the middle of the filter bank we have v0 of m and v1 of m, where v0 of m typically represents a low pass component obtained from x of n and v1 of m corresponds to a high pass component or representation of the high pass or a high frequency content of x of n. So both uh, these branches, both the low pass branch and the high pass branch could be implemented using polyphase implementations. Because we have a filter here for the decimation, a filter followed by the downsampling operation. And in for the interpolation, we have an upsampler followed by a filter. So by splitting these using the polyphase decomposition and interchanging the order of the upsampling and the filtering, we could save implementations. So if we look at the low pass branch where we have the filter, typically the low pass filtered followed by the downsampler, we can split that using a polyphase implementation into a two branch system since we have a downsampling by a factor of two. So as noted, that would uh, contain uh, or involve uh, interchanging the order of the downsampling and the filter. So the two polyphase filters would in this case be obtained from the impulse response of the original filter by reading off the even components of that uh, impulse response and reading off the odd components or the odd indices in the time. Similarly for the upsampling we would interchange the order of the upsampler and the interpolation filter and obtain two polyphase filters based on g of zero. And the same thing can be done for the high pass branch. So we could split the filter H1 using a polyphase implementation and the filter G1 using a polyphase implementation. And the benefit of doing so is that this would reduce the number of multiplications that would have to be carried out per unit time by a factor of two, since we have an upsampling and downsampling by a factor of two in both of these cases. So the overall number of multiplications that would need to be carried out would be reduced by a factor of two. It turns out that we can reduce the number of multiplications per unit time even further for certain filter bank structures if we use the polyphase filters in a clever way. So one such construction where this is the case is the construction known as the quadrature mirror filter bank. So in the QMF construction one choose a specific low pass filter or a base filter H of Z and then one forms all the other filters based on that base filter. So H0 and H and G0, the filters of the low-pass branch, would be chosen based on this. So for this reason, one would typically choose this filter as a low-pass filter. And then one chooses the filters for the high-pass branch, H1 and G1, based on the transfer function of that given filter. Now, studying this expression, one can see that the construction or the criteria for no aliasing will always be fulfilled by such a construction due to symmetry. So this particular expression will always equate to equal to zero, which means that whenever we put together the signals in the QMF construction or the filter bank based on the QMF construction, we will always remove completely the aliasing of the output. And one can also simplify the expression for perfect reconstruction and express that in terms of the base filter. So choosing a base filter which satisfies the following equation will guarantee perfect reconstruction of the filter bank. Now, before going any further, let's consider what some of these construction uh, criteria implies. So for the filter H0 and G0, since they are chosen based on the base filter to be equal to the base filter, there is not too much to say about those. But the filter H1 and G1 are chosen from the transfer function by putting in mining in front of the Z in the Z transform of the impulse response, which gives us the transfer function. So what would that actually imply in the time domain? So would it imply that the filters H1 and G1s are time reversed versions of the base filter or the base filters impulse response? Or would it imply that they are time reversed versions but with also a sign flip of the corresponding uh, base filter? 
or would it mean that every second uh, second tap of the impulse response of the base filter is flipped when constructing H1 and G0 with a minus coming from here? Or would we see a signed reversal so we get minus in terms of H1 and no minus in the G1? Correct answer to the question is option number three. So you would have a reversal of every second tap and the minus would just fall out due to linearity of the C transform. And the way to see that you get a minus for every second tap would be to simply write out the a C transform for H of minus Z, which would look like this. So you would replace Z in the C transform, Z transform with minus Z, and then you could pull out the minus one from this expression and place it in front of the filter taps, which would lead to this signed reversal of every second tap. One can ask a similar question about the frequency response of the filters. So would H1 and G1 simply be frequency reversed versions of the base filter with a minus for G1 coming from this minus? Or would it be a frequency reversal of the base filter with a change in the overall sign of the transform? Or would it be a rotation of the frequency uh, response of the filter by half a period with the minus in the same place as here? Or would it be a rotation of the frequency response with an overall sign change on both filters? Correct answer also to this question is option number three. So it would be a rotation of the frequency response or a rotation in the frequency domain by half a period. And one way of seeing that is noting that we can get the frequency response from the C transform of the impulse response or for the transfer function by uh, putting in e to the j 2 pi nu in place of z. And if we have minus z, which we have in the construction of these filters, the minus can be represented as e to the minus j pi, which can be incorporated into this exponent as a rotation or as a shift of nu by one half, which is half a period of this uh, complex uh, rotation. In order to illustrate this uh, correspondence in the frequency domain, we can look at a particular QMF design. So in this case, we have a 50th order base filter. So a 50th order low pass filter here with a fairly good transition between the pass band and the stop band and relatively low ripples in the stop band. Now, if we were to take this filter and rotate it by half a period in the frequency domain, also using the fact that it's a discrete, Fourier, discrete time Fourier transform so that it's periodic with period one, we would get the following after the rotation by half a period. So we can see that a low pass filter for the design transfers into a high pass filter for H1 and also for G1. So the only difference between H1 and G1 is that the sign has changed, but that doesn't change the magnitude of the transfer function. So this allows us to view the high pass branch as a branch with high pass filters under this design rule. Now, getting back to the polyphase decomposition. So we saw that the base filter, uh, the filter H0 in the low pass branch was given simply by the impulse response of the base filter. And we get the polyphase implementation by simply picking out the even uh, components or the even indices of the impulse response for k equal to zero. And for the second part of the polyphase implementation, we pick out the odd parts or the odd uh, time indices. And we can put together the complete transfer function by this expression, which is simply spacing the uh, impulse response of the polyphase filters by two samples apart and shifting and putting them together back again. Now, if we instead look at H1, which is the uh, low pass or the high pass filter for the analysis section of the uh, filter bank, we see that since this expression here implies that every second uh, tap of the filter is flipped as compared to the base design. Since if we flip every second component, so namely we flip the sign of the odd numbered components, so the, the components where n is odd, we see that the first polyphase filter that we get is the same also for the high pass filter as we had for the low pass filter. But the second part, namely P1, will simply have a sign reverse because we flip the sign of all the odd uh, indices in n. So putting back H1 uh, in terms of its folded phase components, 
would yield the following expression, which would be the same for H0 except for this minus sign when we put them back together. So what this means uh, graphically is that when we are co computing V0 of M and use the polyphase implementation, we have this decomposition which is equivalent or is the same as we saw before. However, when we should compute V1 of M, we could use the same structure, only that we need to add this and subtract this part. So this would give us V1 of M. However, having come this far, we see that it's exactly the same circuit which computes V0 as which computes V1. And the only difference is that we subtract the two components in order to get V1 and we add them up in order to get V0. So what this means is that we can in fact use the same circuits to compute the output needed both for V0 and V1 and we can do so simultaneously. So having a circuit looking like this would allow us to compute V0 of M and V1 of M without having to redo the computations for the high pass branch and the low pass branch of the analysis section of our filter bank. And we can now do the same for the synthesis section. So in this case the first high, low pass filter in the low pass branch used for the interpolation was also given by the base filter. So in this case the polyphase components will be exactly the same. However, for the high pass filter that we used in the interpolation in the high pass branch, we have a minus as compared with the high pass filter that we used for the analysis part. And all this minus will do is it will change the sign of the polyphase components. So we'll still have a different sign between uh, P0 and P1 in the high-pass branch, but we instead will have the minus for the P0 component rather than for the P1 component. But we could still use the same argument for G1 being equal to uh, a combination of these polyphase components, but in this case the minus will go in front of P0. And we can look at this graphically as well. So for the synthesis part used in the low-pass branch, nothing has really changed. So we have our polyphase decomposition that we use to implement the filter G0 and it's given with the polyphase components P0 and P1 followed by an upsampling and adding to back together to get the component of the total output corresponding to the low pass branch. Now if we were to compute the component corresponding to the high pass branch of the filter we could do so using the same circuit only that we need to sign to reverse the input to the filter P0. And that would give us Y1, which is the component of the final output corresponding to the high pass branch. So in order to get the final output, we need to add up Y0 and Y1 in order to get the components that correspond to both branches added up for the final output. But due to the linearity of this system, it doesn't matter if we add up the output here or if we input uh, we add up the inputs and then pass them through the systems since the system is exactly the same up to this signed reversal for the both cases. So doing that schematically gives us a, a circuit which looks like this where we prior to putting anything into the filters we add up V0 and V1 and account for this minus sign that we had for the high pass branch. So this circuit will in fact compute the corresponding output Y of N which is composed of uh, the part corresponding to the low press branch Y0 plus the part corresponding to the high press branch Y1. So if we put everything back together now, we see that the following quadrature mirror filter bank given with the structure or the symmetry that we have just introduced in the filters can be also be implemented using a polyphase implementation using the following circuit. So comparing the number of complex multiplications or the number of multiplications per unit time of the base implementation and the polyphase implementation, we can see that the polyphase implementation uses one-fourth of the number of multiplications per unit time of the original implementation of the QMF bank. And the reason for that is that the polyphase implementation alone saves a factor of two, but then reusing the polyphase implementation for both the high low pass and the high pass branch again saves a factor of two, leading to an overall factor of four reduction in terms of the multiplications per unit time of this implementation through clever use of the polyphase filter components. So to summarize, we've just seen that the QMF banks can be efficiently implemented using polyphase implementations. So more efficiently than just applying the polyphase decomposition in a straightforward way to the filters involved. 
and the key to this is to reuse the polyphase filters of several branches of the filter bank. And this can be extended also to cases where we all not only divide the, uh, the signal into two components, but even more components. But in the case when we divide the signal into two components, as shown in the examples in the previous slides, we see that we can reduce the number of multiplications by a factor of four in the polyphase implementation.